everyone and uh, today we are with Samparna Mitra. So Samparna has just made it to ISI. Which ISI have you chosen Samparna? Uh, Kolkata. You chose Kolkata. All right. All right, everyone. So we have Samparna here who's made it to ISI in her first attempt along with, uh, you know, being in third year of college. So, so Samparna, firstly, huge congratulations. <laughs> that is Thank in you. order. Take us through your journey, Samparna. That, uh, you know, how was it for you these entire... So when did you start preparing? Let's Let's begin from that. I started preparing um, midway in my second year. Uh, okay. So I started doing a little bit of um, past year papers just to understand where my level was before I started seriously preparing. Um, but then in May, I started like last year, May, and during my summer vacations, I really sat down to brush up on my maths because that was, in my opinion, my weakest point. And then I started the EduShore course. So after that, um, uh, after that, it was pretty much on track because I was studying regularly since then. So yeah. So, um, studying regularly, like, is a easy thing to say, but a lot of people find it very difficult to implement, uh, because a you have your college pressures, uh, you have your semester exams and and sems, some project or something. So, uh, how did you how what was your routine like on a daily basis? If I tell you my routine, it will sound a little unrealistic. Um, because I'll be very honest, uh, I am a person who really enjoys being part of extracurricular activities in college as well. Okay. So I was part of the debate society. I am the secretary there. So I had a lot of responsibilities on my like shoulders because I had events to organize. Then we had our, um, like our eco department also had fests and all. So I was very busy with all of that for a large part of the year as well. Um, but at the same time, I made it a point that uh, I, I would come home and study for at least three hours to four hours every day. Like even if it's a Saturday or a Sunday um, and try to solve um, as many times a past your paper as I could because through my experience I have seen that even if even if the past your paper is not exactly repeated or questions are not repeated at least the level is something that can be understood through solving a past your paper so from the first day only when I started doing like brushing up my basics and everything I started by using the past your questions themselves to um, work on them regularly and that became my practice so I think a it's not important. Like I, I when I when I started preparing, I had heard a lot of people, my seniors, they said that you have to study at least seven, eight hours every day. And after going from home, you have to start studying because there's a lot of syllabus because there's no end to the syllabus in the ME Eco uh, programs. But I found it very difficult a to sit for so long and study because uh, I can't sit for so long and study. And secondly, after college, I used to get tired, and then there was other things also. So, um, but yes, uh, I have developed a routine after a lot of pushing myself very hard to get myself this much discipline that I can sit for three to four hours every day. Obviously, it increased towards the end. Uh, yeah. But yes. So uh, any fixed timings that you had that maybe in the morning or in the evening that, you know, this is the time I give for my entrances? So I'm a person who stays up late at night. So okay. I used to study from, say, eight o'clock and till till dinner time and then maybe after dinner after some time rest and talking to my family and all I used to study again till 1 32 o'clock at night all right so it was a night time that you did it dedicated and you know of course there are things to do distractions family you have to spend time dinner this that so uh, effectively if you study till till two you would get like three to four hours only under your belt but so was was that routine taxing on you or you know that was something that you were comfortable with it, it was very comfortable for me. Like, uh, okay. personally, um, one thing I think is when I was doing the Edushar, uh, like the, the way, you, way you were telling us, like from week to week, I think the difficulty level also increased. Like sometimes I was not able to follow the weekly processes. Um, but even then, I think as the difficulty level increased, initially, I used to think uh, that even a simple sum would be difficult. But then, like I said, because I was sitting at my comfortable time when I had like I had less distractions, as less distractions as possible. Um, so it, it became easy for me to tackle the time like that because I was going on a difficulty level like that. Yeah. So so a lot of people think that every question in ISI is difficult. Now that you've gone through this journey, what do you think? Is every question in ISI difficult? I don't think it's necessarily very difficult. Like some of them are definitely very tricky. Like even after now, I, I think like, uh, like how would I even solve it? Because even now I don't, I'm not very sure of whether the answer is correct or not. But uh, most of the questions, I think that once we practice um, whatever papers they may be, whether they be ISI papers or they may be other papers, mm -hmm. I think we, we grasp some 
tricks or some some techniques by which we can identify that the sum can be broken down in this way and then i can apply something like this so initially to me like some questions especially in maths and calculus they used to look very like very difficult just by seeing it but now i understand that yes there's this theorem or there's this idea that i can apply or something that i picked up from a past year paper that i can apply to break this question down right. so that becomes simpler all right so uh, that's what we hope like by the end of it that you know you the questions uh, can be you can understand how to tackle them because you will get a new question but the concept is something that you have already done and that was true for your year also for both isipea and pb i know the pb looked very difficult in especially i think what did the what did played the mind trick was the five compulsory questions Absolutely. having no choice i think that kind of got people very worked up that what if i can't do this and the first question itself was not very easy so i think that got people very worked up but if you look at, look at the paper now you know in a uh, in a calm space it is again there are things that we have done so you know it's not yeah. that uh, we I have not done i think if yeah. i spend a little more time then i definitely yeah it's the pressure that time actually that makes the themes paper seem more difficult than it actually is absolutely so and uh, okay uh, what about books uh, so uh, take us through that you know which books uh, would you recommend for every uh, subject that we tackled i don't think i refer to a lot of books like when we were in our course in college because i studied bachelor in economics i already had a lot of books at hand like right. varian um i had macroeconomics books uh, as well with me like don bush fisher and other books um so i mean those books some of the concepts were already there in my college course so yeah. for me personally i didn't really have to go through a lot of books separately for the masters uh, entrances right. but obviously because i did a lot of coursework at school uh, not at school at college um that really added on here so that's why i didn't really have to refer to books in this case okay so you just continued with doing uh, whatever you were comfortable in as you were there so that is that makes it easy so uh, for you to you know not take that pressure that i have to do, do only this book that's yeah. that that was also a, again a great thing that you did and were you able to take all the mocks like were you regular with taking all the weekly tests and everything were you able to do those yeah so i i even if i was not able to keep up with the like the daily tasks that you gave us like solving these past year papers or things like that yeah. i made it a point that i would sit for the exam every tuesday and i made it a point that i would attempt all of the mock tests like even towards the end i attempted every mock test that was there for um every entrance that i was sitting for including msc and iift and all Okay. so uh the mocks were very very helpful uh personally for me because they made me understand where i am because even after solving so many past year papers we can think that under the pressure and under the time limit it can become difficult for us to actually yeah. solve it in the exam so the mocks yeah. were very very helpful that's good to hear and um uh so when share with us what was like the most difficult part for you in this journey uh you know um which what do you think uh, was it uh, after like you know iit CU, uh, cuet or was it during your college exams which uh, or was it emotionally keeping yourself charged up that you know this is going to happen for me or anything you know what is it what is for you the most difficult thing i think um one thing is definitely that uh, one thing that i faced is that our uh, first exam that we have to give is iit gate and that starts in january like the very beginning of february mm -hmm. and the last exam that we are giving is something in the middle of june so the 6 months that was there it was pure torture um, for the lack of a better word because it, it because we don't know which paper will come out we don't know what the level will be and even i am sure you would un understand when i say this that even the gate and jam papers were slightly different from what they were previously yeah. the yeah. their level got changed so yes. there is a lot of unpredictability that that is there in these 6 months so that was a very very tense time for both me and my parents because they went through all the emotions that i went through as well and then all the um, admission like lists once they start coming out that is also a very tense time because even if i can't make it through one list i have to wait for another and that's mm. also very unpredictable mm. um so that was a very very difficult time for me personally so it's um, difficult to go through so many exams like it's not you know one exam like a cat exam one exam and you right. are done maybe right. it's one after the other and and now though they have reduced So imagine the students before you. So there was no CUET. There were DSE right. would be separate, JNU would be separate, IGRE right. would be separate. Every exam, GIP is separate. So it used to be like it used to be madness that you know what exam. Now you still have the time to focus on that. Okay, this is IIT. Then post IIT, a whole month for CUET and a mm -hmm. whole month or two for ISI. So it used to not be like that at all. So this year I felt that your calendar was really good. That you know at least you mm -hmm. had. designated uh, you know periods that okay this period i can only focus on isi and not nothing else to worry about 
so that ways i think the calendar really uh, is better now with lesser exams to uh, to give so yeah and uh, what about the interview how did the in, how was the whole interview experience um it, it was nerve wracking to be sure but i think uh, i received i had gone prepared that i would at least face three to four questions but i faced only two questions which was a surprise for me yeah yeah so the first question that i faced uh, i have sent you already um, the questions but i'll just like to talk about it they first asked me about my background and things like that but then they asked me what uh, domain i would like and i i didn't have any preference so they asked me a microeconomics question and the consumer theory question was fairly simple but i think what was really beneficial for me through the interview was that the professors were not um not at all cool or not like unfriendly towards us like we have this idea that interview panels will all be like very strict but they not just encourage me to draw things on the board and take my time to understand and explain them the answer but also um uh, they they help me with certain points like if if i was making a small mistake they were saying that maybe you can think of it different perspective things like this so yeah the the interview was short for me i, I was very surprised in fact uh, one thing that i'd like to talk about in case other people will watch this video and maybe they'll take tips for the interview is that they asked me a question from statistics saying that um there's correlation equal to zero implied independence and i said no because i knew it was no but then they asked me for an example and i was at that moment so i told them that i really can't uh, remember an example right now but i wrote some things on the board and then they were like okay this is enough and then they asked me to leave but later on when i saw that that thing on the board x y whatever i wrote i realized that that would solve um that that would prove that correlation does, equals does not uh, equals to zero does not imply independence so maybe uh, like even if i fumbled in the beginning because they were not very strict and not very cold for me i was able to still confidently put out that sum on the board. yeah it's very important to have a non judgmental environment if you know people are judging you it's very difficult to think straight sometimes that happens in class also that if sometimes yeah. i am very bothered that the class should go well it will not go well because you know it uh, that pressure gets to you yes so yeah 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 so great and um uh, anything else that you would like to uh, anything if i missed out any last moment tip or any advice to anybody who's thinking of taking these exams uh, if you'd like to share two things i'd like to say um is firstly for a person who comes from an economic scholarship background like myself in college we are not really exposed to history of indian economics or theory of indian economics like that like we we study so much of you know models and things like that but very simple things like you know five year plans or or or, or that kind of historical topics is is not something that exposed to me in college and even in like the edusho courses it's something that you have to take initiative on your own to take out because even though you give us the material and you give us a lot of notes which are very very helpful but personally like i did i ignored them till a very late time like for cuet that was one of the main reasons that i um, did not score completely to my expectation in cuet um because i had ignored the indian history for a very long time but uh, like after the cuet exam when i went to your notes i was like oh this was there <laughs> and i could have and i could have answered this right so that right. is something that i would definitely uh, ask everyone who's preparing to please go through the indian history but it can seem tedious it can seem very very taxing because it's a lot of heavy material but still it's very important especially for exams like cvt yeah so that's something that even i figured that even if you do everything in micro macro math start correctly if you don't get some uh, indian economy gk or of that right those right at least like you would not have made it to the dse first list as a non du student <laughs> so Absolutely. so that is as important i mean so you are expected to get the micro macro maths at right because it's the cuet level and if you're preparing for other exams that's something that you should know by now but you for cuet per se that non uh, the indian economy bit becomes very very important so yes. yeah uh, so i will thank you for telling me that i will make sure i hammer it down more to the students that you have to do this because uh, i worked very hard on making those notes this year so yes. i will now more hammer it down on you studying those notes <laughs> Yes, ma'am. And one last thing that I'd like to talk about is that when I was when I finished my SI paper and things like that, I realized that um, solving most of these sums are not just about getting the answer correctly, but also a lot about intuition. Because a lot of sums can actually be solved by graphical methods or just by understanding um, through theoretical concepts, like what would happen. Things like exchange rate, depreciating appreciation. These things we can we can infer from our concepts and then solve the sum as well. so that's another tip that i would like to give um is that which really helped me is that when solving past year papers we understand patterns of how things would happen in case of a certain change and a lot of intuitive understanding builds it 
we understand what sums we are solving, not just plain solving them, but just understanding why this is happening as well, both in micro and in macro. So that is something that I would really recommend everyone to understand and then infer. Um, because intuition also helps, especially in MCQ answers, where a lot of the answers don't exactly need that, like the specific value, but also tentative, like the direction of movement, things like this also really a matter. So, yeah. And if, if also you intuitively make your, like without solving, if you can do it, that would save you a ton of time also absolutely. in the final exam. If you are, you know, if you've got it so strong that you can look at a question and know that, okay, end, end mein hone wala hai. Yes. Uh, you know, so yeah. Uh, of course that helps right? in macro if you know that uh, if it's a certain exchange rate and if it's a certain movement then this is the end so know that instead of you know having to solve it through the, doing the whole thing absolutely yes, absolutely absolutely yeah all right thank you so much Amparna for your time and I wish you all the very very best uh, for your ISI journey and your career ahead uh, of uh, course that thank you ma'am so grateful to Edishore for all the help honestly um, and it has been a great journey and I'm, I'm glad that I join it with your family um at the right time to make <laughs> this far thank you so much Ma. thank you so much Samparna. thank you thank you all the best bye bye thank you, Ma. bye Ma.